hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review we are back with a brand new review for the real housewives season 15 episode 11 listen y'all i'm feeling a little bit under the weather honey so hopefully this review will still give the judge that should be given honey because the helpers were putting me to sleep and on top of this medicine honey uh-uh uh-uh but child let's get into it if we gonna get into it when the episode first opens up drew is still outside crying now y'all know her and she by sheree got into it last episode sonya sheree and kenya they come out she's upset because sheree is using it as a joke and she feels like they never take her seriously every time she says her feelings they pretty much dismiss her and she's never been sued before this is new territory and sheree is making a joke about it so Sheree is like, well, let me talk to her. You know what I'm saying? Let me just talk to her and see what's going on. Drew wasn't trying to hear it. She said she needed a moment. Sheree was upset because she needed a moment. Ma'am, when you were inside, you didn't want to discuss it, honey. When Sonya said, let's put a pin in it, y'all put a pin in it and moved on. So she just needs a second. Sheree was like, listen, in the confessional, she said Drew brought up things back about me last year okay you can dish it but you can't take it so everything i hear about you i'm gonna bring it up now y'all know how i like to do honey i like to be fair and i mean sheree has a point drew has brought things back about sheree from that messy assistant of hers and she said it in front of everybody at kenya's daughter's party so i mean it's pretty much the same thing y'all were in a group setting sitting down eating getting into it and so she brought up you paying the chef the same way you said that she don't pay so i mean girl inside candy gets up so marlo was like you going to check on drew she said no i'm going to the restroom so they all start cackling she's like i feel like drew is acting candy girl now i like you but you still could have at least checked on that lady you could have because she was riding for you when you and Marlo had child's issue. I didn't like that. I'm sorry. I did not like that. That's not the type of person that I am. Don't be being mean to Drew because your stomach hurt. <laughs> Girl, don't be being mean to Drew. She got enough of that. This is crazy. So anywho, Sheree is outside telling her that she had no idea that it was this bad. She was like, I didn't know you were going through all of that. Girl, you knew exactly what was going on. That lady was talking all over the blogs. Do you hear me? Honey, it was a full-on shade room expose. And that lady has videos on YouTube. You can hop on the Googler. You knew exactly what was going on, Sheree. And you ain't fooling me. Moving forward. So Kenya was like, well, I mean, I feel like it's because of Ralph and the things that they're going through. Sonya in the confessional was like, you know, I didn't really realize that she was going through so much. Here goes Sheree. She ain't got a thousand dollars. Now, Sheree, I know damn well you're not talking about somebody having a thousand dollars. Girl, goodbye. And I told y'all, I told y'all, I told y'all it was more to it and it was more so about Ralph down there shaking and gyrating in that man thong. I told y'all, listen, when you're going through a relationship issue, you be almost ready to cry when you catch a red light. I mean, everything makes you extra sensitive, honey. Somebody say, you know, you ask for extra tomatoes on your hamburger and they say we're out of tomatoes, honey, you just be ready to fall out. <laughs> you be ready to fall out. So I understand. And when you are in a marriage, it is 10 times worse because everything feels like doomsday. So I totally understand what Drew is going through. So Sheree apologizes for it. And Kenya is like, how many people are on this trip? Sheree say it's eight. She said, okay, what is a thousand divided by eight, honey? What is a thousand dollars divided by eight? And then she gets in a confessional. She was like, do broke bees split lawsuits? In this case, we do. So we can make it go away. So Drew out there talking about, it's not about the money. We already pay her money. This is stuff that you know absolutely nothing about. Listen, I'm like Kenya. If it will make her go away, then cool. Honey, give her whatever. Baby, make break it down into small unmarked bills so this lady can go on about her business. I am not in the business of wasting time. Now, I understand people, you know, would say pain would make it look like an admission of guilt. But baby, I cannot. Okay, I cannot. And I'm really starting to wonder how Drew's finances are. I'm really wondering that because two seasons ago, she brought that used wig and that dang on tape recorder down to the holiday gift exchange. She seemed a little bit iffy when they were at the table, when they were asking about, you know, how do we divide $50,000 amongst seven women? And, you know, she was a little, she was hemming and hawing a little bit. Like, Candy, you got your money? Girl, now you know. Now you know of all people to ask at this table. You know Candy got her portion, child. So, I mean, it's just really making me wonder 
you know, if she really has it. Because a lot of times people be faking it until they make it. Okay. And I mean, the checks be clearing, but just enough. So, I mean, and as now that they have that actor strike and the writer strike and Hollywood is turned upside down, they're coming forward with their stories and all that glitters is not gold. Just because you see them on TV does not make them rich. So you just never really know what somebody's finances look like. So it could be that she doesn't have it. I don't know. But uh, Drew, I told you I would cash up you if need be, girl. Listen, if you get all your followers to send you $1, we can make this lady go away. <laughs> We can make her go away, Drew. Oh, poor Drew. This got Ralph written all over it. I knew it was him at the root of it. I knew it. I was like, you know, she crying because Sheree is kind of ignorant a little bit. But at the same damn time, she's really crying because of what she's going through with Ralph. So Kenya's like, girl, we can just make her go away. You need a better lawyer. And child, can you see if that lawyer can make uh, Mark go away as well? Okay, because we need to get him up out of here. I and mean, it's been long overdue. Whatever this lawyer does for Drew, she needs to do the same thing for you. But um, to answer your question, Ken, the answer is $125, okay? 1000 divided by eight is $125. That's probably how much y'all meal's gonna cost. So everybody just zell Drew $125. Girl, you better start asking for loans and whatnot. Moving forward. So inside, Marlo's talking about, I don't know if she's serious or not. Hush money bags, Marlo. Please be quiet. So Drew tells her, which is Sheree, outside that she feels like people never acknowledge her feelings. And I can agree to that. I mean, if we look back on Drew's time on the show, as soon as she was introduced, Kenya was like, Cynthia, where you get this stray from? Latoya immediately went in on her and started talking about her wigs, honey, and how they were sitting low down to her eyebrows, honey, and they were giving very much synthetic outro realness. After that, we had to deal with Ralph saying she does not even deserve steak and lobster. She deserves a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. He down to the Tampa. It's just too much. Okay, it is just too much on one person. I don't think anybody that she encounters cares about her feelings. I really don't, besides her mama them. So anywho, Sonya and Kenya, they come back in and Marlo couldn't wait to tell them what Candy said. Here she go. Candy said and seen when y'all walked outside. <laughs> She couldn't wait to say it. So even Sonya had to correct her. She said, listen, this is the most real and vulnerable that I have ever seen Drew. Okay. And she feels like when she comes to us with something that's hurt her feelings, we don't receive it. But Sheree did end up receiving it in the end. But I feel like she was really going through something. And I have to say, I respected Sonya for saying that because she could have jumped on the bandwagon and came in and been like, yeah, you know how Drew is. Remember our little incident? She's dramatic. But she really took a moment to look at Drew and realize, you know, maybe something is going on. So I respected that. In the confessional, the producer said, Drew, is there something you're not telling us? Drew basically said it's because Ralph be doing the wrong thing every time he go out of town. Girl, listen, if you have to worry every time he's out of your sight, it's a wrap. I'm t that's not the life, girl. I am telling you from personal experience. I have never had so much anxiety, stomach aches, headaches, having to constantly check. Baby, that's not the life. It ain't the life. Let him go, honey. Let him go. Let him be free to roam the Tampa streets. Girl, let his ass go. So Drew and Sheree come on back to the table and Sonya is telling them, you know, she wants them to be receptive of each other and very respectful when they speak to each other because, you know, they all have a problem with that. Yes, y'all do. Okay, y'all need to get it together. And Sonya, I have to say, now this you're on point with. Okay? If you want to get your makeup done to go eat a baguette, then be my guest. <laughs> Shout out to Phaedra High Class Park, honey. This is the one time that I wholeheartedly agree with Sonya Richards Ross. I agree, girl. So they're sitting down. Sheree brings up what Kenya said about Candy not being around as much. And Candy was like, it's because... I'm working you know it's not because I don't want to be around y'all but you know it's because I'm still building I feel like I'm still building everybody's looking at her like girl you're still building and she's like you know it's for me I feel like it's better if you've never had it than to have it and lose it so when you get it again you never want to lose it and I understand that I really do uh Candy you are too hard on yourself girl you are by far the most successful housewife on Atlanta. And I know, you know, sometimes we look at ourselves and we're like, you know, I feel like I'm not doing enough, but other people might feel like you're doing too much. So it's really a catch 22, but girl, if the 
husband is um complaining about it and the children are complaining about it the housewives helpers are complaining about it we're gonna have to get that fixed so they ask how she's balancing family and friends well that's your right here goes your right talking about you know it's it's, it's easy for me because i mean it's not hard for me because i have to have my me time oh girl we know that's why it's been 14 years and no result okay you gonna relax if you don't do nothing else so candy in the confessional is like you know i just realized that i've been absent but it's due to work and i wouldn't be shocked if they stopped inviting me places i know i would do the same thing candy i understand your ambition but girl you got to learn how to take a break i just learned how to not feel guilty when i do something for me and I ain't nowhere near on no Candy Burris level. Do y'all hear me? And I understand being hard on yourself because I look at this channel. And I'm like, dang, the numbers ain't numbering. I went from having a great year to now these numbers got decimal points in between them. I don't like that. You know, you really get hard on yourself and you try to figure out how you can fix it, how you can make it better. But sometimes you just got to say it is what it is. And that's where I am now. You know what? If this channel gonna grow, it's gonna grow. If it ain't, then it ain't. Honey, the people that's rocking with me, I appreciate y'all. And the people that's gone, deuces. Moving forward. So here go Marlo being all fake. Talk them out. Take some time for you, Candy, because you work very hard. Girl, goodbye. And uh, Candy, just a word to the wise, honey. Don't be saying it too loud on camera that you ain't got no time and you spread thin, honey. The Bravo gods will make sure that you have all the time you need. I'm just saying, honey, you can't trust them. <laughs> you can't trust them. In the next scene, it's the next morning. The ladies are getting ready for the day. Sonya's synthetic wigs are burning. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, y'all. It was the outlets. I mean, I think, honey. I don't know if it was real or not, but something was going on with it. So all the ladies are meeting down in the lobby. Sonya was still upstairs changing per Marlo's instruction. Child, I wish I would change because Marlo said so. Here comes Sonya running downstairs with different change of clothes. Talking about, I'm going to put them on. I swear, Marlo. Girl, please. I would have told Marlo, I'm wearing what I'm going to wear. If you don't like it, then don't talk to me, honey. Girl, goodbye. So Sheree gives them the itinerary for the day, but Kenya is still upstairs getting ready. So Kenya comes downstairs, and I was just thinking, Kenya, it took you that long to put that on? Girl. So she comes out the door, and she has on slippers. So she falls kind of like on her hip and like her back is hurting. She's in extreme pain. And I was like, oh my gosh, that, that fall, that fall was hard as hell. Kenya, why did you wear slippers outside, honey? Slip being the operative word, it's raining. Girl, oh my goodness. I was like, oh my God. So she's in extreme pain. They go over to check on her. She gets up, they're taking her to the hospital and Candy is going to go with them. Kenya gonna go down to the hospital on a trip if she don't do nothing else. So inside, Drew is at the bar with Courtney, cousin Courtney, okay? And she gonna have the nerve to say, I mean, I feel like the universe has a way of, you know, doing things. I mean, karma is real because she's a mean girl. You know what, girl? That is an effed up thing to say. She could have really injured herself. You know what? I, see, this is why you don't be letting the friends of do too much because this is exactly what you get. Her going at it with you doesn't warrant her being hurt. Girl, y'all ain't really even into it for real. Once you are of a certain age, it's hard for you to heal. That's no joke. You'll end up with hip replacements and knee replacements and all kinds of stuff. Girl, it was wet out there. That was just nasty. Now, I know some people might disagree and, yeah, Kenya deserves it. That lady did not deserve to fall. That could turn into something years down the line that you will not be able to correct. Kenya is in her 50s. Child, y'all crazy. Moving forward. So in the confessional, here go Drew. Well, I mean, what she said just didn't sit well with me. Well, Drew, if it didn't sit well with you, tell your cousin and lie that it don't sit well with you. Don't just sit up there and look her in her face. Take your shades off, sit them on the bar top and say, girl, that's not cool. Say it, Drew. Girl, I'm gonna have to get you some t-shirts made that says, say it, Drew, because you don't say nothing you're supposed to say, girl. So Candy's in the confession. She's like, it's my last day here. The first day I was sick. The second day I'm at the hospital. This is not what I expected. I get it, Candy, but Kenya would have gone with you without hesitation. So I'm sorry your trip got turned upside down, but your friend needs you right now. So the rest of the heifers are on their way to the market. They get there. Child, y'all be careful getting off the sprinter because, honey, ooh, everybody falling down and whatnot. They get to the market. They're looking at the fish and the vegetables. So this guy pulls out a rabbit. Here go Marlo. That's a BBL. <laughs> oh, child, I'm not about to play. So everybody like, oh, I got to get a BBL like that rabbit. So Drew was like, I got to get one because my thing ain't nearly thinking like that thing. Here go Marlo. 
um, Kenya should have went to the rabbit's doctor. And child, Kenya said that thing is real. So they call Candy to check on Kenya. Candy is not happy that she's there. She ready to go, okay? And probably ready to eat. They got them lined up in the hallway. Don't nobody speak English. And then they finally found somebody that could help them. But the trip is ruined for the day. So all the ladies are like, oh, y'all should get the VIP treatment. What's going on? Monyella talking about, well, you know, y'all are VIPs, ma'am. This is the hospital. VIP? Girl, this ain't no nightclub, honey. Y'all so used to Atlanta club culture, honey. Y'all don't even realize y'all in the damn hospital, baby. They don't have sparklers in the VIP section. This is the hospital. So I'm really gonna say, it's no way that I would go to the hospital and blend in with the wall, but that's what Candy does. And you know, she blends in. I don't even think she's tall enough to stand out. I don't know about all that, but Bravo cannot let them people know that she needs to be seen ASAP because she's an Atlanta housewife. Child, the entitlement of it all. If y'all don't shut up. So they go for lunch. They sit down. They're talking. Marlo starts talking about this season's mate that she has. She said, you know, she hasn't dated in years. So to be dating someone that's funny and handsome and sends her good morning text. Okay, it's great. So she starts showing them the pictures of her first day. Now, mind you, completely unprompted. Sheree being messy. Talking about, can you say it's not real? Why y'all always worried about what's real? If you ask me, none of y'all's relationships are real unless y'all are married. Okay, and that's just that on that. And we know dang on well that you in hotel. And we know dang on well that you in hotel are made in Huntsville. Okay, this is a Carlos King production. I don't want to hear nothing about y'all. My yetta was like, yeah, I mean, it's early to be putting him around everybody. But you know, some people move differently. Sheree, I thought y'all were on a healing journey. Ain't nothing but mess happening. And that's courtesy of you. You're so messy. It's just like unreal. So Marla was like, well, you know, me and him, we just having fun. So Sheree talking about, well, you know, she knows Roy too. Sheree, Monietta knows she was present. She knows that she knows Roy. So Monietta feels like she didn't like that Marlo was trying to steal Kenya's shine. Marlo said, I was just shocked when I looked at the phone and realized it was Roy. I went on a date with him in 2018. I was just shocked. She's like, but no, then you went to the DM. Marlo said, well, she went to the DM for Martell. And again, I'm going to stand and die on this hill alone, I guess. You went to the DM to try to shame her. Like, oh, girl, your man was in my DM, okay? <laughs> yep. Kenya went to the DM to try to warn she by Shin of his horish ways that he's exhibited every season of Love and Marriage. Huntsville, there is a difference. You and Kenya don't like each other. So we already know that was a dig. Sheree and Kenya don't have a problem with each other. She was trying to say, girl, look, now I don't know why he was trying to DM me, but judging by what I've seen of him, it probably was on some stuff trying to get a housewife and he landed you. I'm just telling you, girl, I'm just giving you a heads up. I just want you to be warned. It is not the same. So then Sheree old rotary phone ringtone starts screeching. I said, girl, what is this ringtone, honey? Remind me of 1997 when my mama house phone used to be ringing. I should have known it was hotel. He mysteriously calls during filming and she got the ringer on. I have never, in the history of neverdom, on Housewives, on any franchise or series, heard their phone ring. I said, girl, not this phone ringing. He on the phone with that script that he tells every woman that he dealing with, including Arion. And they all like, oh my gosh, I just love him from Sheree. As long as he don't have no ankle bracelet, I'm here for it. Anyway, after that, Sheree throws more salt and she's like yeah Candy said and seen when you got up Drew and so Drew is trying to explain it away why Candy probably did that and they feel like Drew is afraid to talk to Candy about it so Marlo was like yeah I mean had it been me they would have annihilated me listen I didn't like that she said that you know to Hattie's help us kick in about Drew girl you don't say no stuff like that especially in front of Marlo now if you would have said it to Kenya and seen I still would have thought it was you know it wasn't right, but to say it in front of them, girl, no, nah, honey, mm -mm, absolutely not. So Sheree was like, I feel like we're being fake right now. Y'all are being fake at this table. So she brings up what went down with Marlo and Drew and Marlo ended up apologizing. Now we all know that Marlo ain't real. And we know this apology ain't real because when she was in the back of that ride on her way to her first date with Scottly, she apologized then too as soon as she hung up she said Drew was bad built she was built like Spongebob Squarepants her own husband don't wanna so Marlo girl you was cussing Drew out in your head and you know it in the next scene we see seven and a half hours later that Kenya and Candy are back from the hospital and Candy got her a snack 
So the rest of the ladies, they go make pottery. And as I'm watching this episode, and I told y'all I don't feel that well, all of these Atlanta activities in Portugal, dinner, a farmer's market, and pottery, child, I'm asleep. I'm asleep. <laughs> I'm asleep. What is this? What is it? Anyway, they start painting this pottery, and Marlo and Sheree cannot help themselves. They have got to mention Candy and Kenya. They have got to do it. Marlo said whenever Candy and Kenya aren't around, they get along. The energy is different. The air tastes better. Marlo, are you dressed in Dior and Delusions? Girl, everybody was getting along last night and they were there. You and Sheree are the main ones inciting mess. Did you forget that you were kicking Kenya's door after she did miss, dismissed herself for the evening? Did you forget that all of y'all were together and Kenya was just trying to have a conversation with you and all of a sudden you jumped fly because you feel like y'all should be able to talk over each other? Girl, what are you talking about? You can't go a scene without mentioning them. So even if they aren't there, you're going to keep their name alive no matter what. So it's later that night. Sheree is playing on the phone with Martell. Girl, bye. Marlo is FaceTiming Scottly. Then they get ready for this sleepover. So everybody's coming down to Sheree's room. Side note. Drew, that top is too small. Girl, what is happening? You know, I'm all for a little underboob, but it was just weird looking. And also, I never realized that Drew has a tattoo and she uses makeup to cover it, you know, up near her decolletage. Because I was looking and I said, I can see Drew's tattoo. I had no idea that she had a tattoo up there. But anyway, Candy walks in and Sheree talking about Candy walked in looking like Cleo from Set It Off. Girl, you need to get your fashions together. What you want her to wear sitting in this room? You just be saying any old thing. Child, she is dressed appropriately for this trip. Ain't nothing but rain and a bunch of errands y'all running. Y'all ain't doing nothing else. Girl, and what else is going on? So they all sitting there and Candy is telling that Kenya was okay because they asked her how did things go at the hospital. She starts explaining. Then Drew tells Candy that she heard what she said. And Candy was like, yes, I said and seen. So Drew said, but I mean, it was a real moment for me. Candy's like, well, it wasn't even that serious of a conversation. And so Drew is trying to explain to her, for her, it was. She said, I just feel like y'all are too uptight around here. Candy, don't you Drew like that. Because you know dang on well, if it's serious to you and you get to crying, you want them to respect you. And you want them to respect your feelings. It seems like y'all always joke at Drew's expense. I like you, but I don't like that. Now, I don't know if it's because, you know, you jet lag, you don't feel too well, honey, but I don't like the way that you're dismissing this. Like, it was just a joke. I was just playing, but she was really having a moment. And people say a lot about Kenya, but Kenya was the first person to get up and go check on Drew. And Drew was like, well, I mean, it's a time for fun shade, but I've never been that vulnerable in front of the group. So Kenya is like, girl, you done been into it plenty of times before. So then we hit the flashbacks. And so Drew was like, but... Did you ever stop to think that maybe I'm really dealing with something and this was not an acting moment for me? Like I was not acting. So Candy ended up apologizing, but she still feels like Drew is being dramatic. I couldn't be on this show. <laughs> I could not be on this show because my personality would never work. I cannot stand people to dismiss me. I don't like that. Sonya starts pouring her heart out about her sister and Candy was like, so what's been going on with Drop It With Drew? <laughs> Lord, make it stop. Lord, make it stop. Mm -mm -mm. Oh, these heifers crazy. Here comes Sheree talking about. Well, you know what? I haven't seen y'all's name on my site to purchase anything. Girl, you know ain't nothing on that error page. How we gonna go and get something off a white page with nothing on it but error message 404? Goodbye, Sheree, and good night. So Sonya is explaining to her, girl, that site was not up. She's like, well, I supported you, Sonya. I came to your charity event. I gave you $5,000, honey. I let you borrow $5,000. Okay, congratulations, Sheree. Okay, congratulations. And we hope the check clear. Congratulations. Marlo said, well, they said it was overpriced and it was on all the baba. <laughs> <laughs> when Marlo said... They said it was overpriced and it was on Alibaba. Not, not Alibaba, but Alibaba. I, child, I hollered. I, I just hollered. I said, baby, that was good to me. Marlo, that was hilarious. So Sonya was pissed because she felt like Sheree trying to throw her under the bus. Girl, we wanted to support you, but you know that site went up. And so she ended up ordering her stuff. Child, I hope y'all get it. I guess. So production wraps. And then Drew tells us 
that they brought up her making out with Latoya on the bolo trip. So of course, Drew was denying it. And she was like, yeah, Latoya said that at the reunion, but she said Candy told her to say that. Drew and Candy arguing because Drew is saying Candy is lying. Candy was like, girl, one thing I don't do is lie, okay? And I know what I saw and I know what you did. Okay, girl, let me get the hell out of here because y'all about to piss me off. I can't stand when people say I'm lying, girl, let me go. So production asked Marlo if she saw it. She was like, 80%, yes, I did. He said, what's the other 20? <laughs> I can't stand out of them. He said, what's the other 20? She said, I don't know. Drew got me so confused. I don't know if she lying now. I believe her. Oh, child, that was so funny to me. Why are y'all bringing up two-year-old stuff? That's why Tanya Sam was never heard from again. She just couldn't risk it. Y'all ain't got nothing better to discuss. Well, ain't nothing going on this season, honey. Y'all went to go look at some grapes, some tomatoes, and a rabbit's BBL. So it really ain't nothing to discuss this season. So I guess y'all got to go back two years. Child, what is going on? I feel like somebody needs to get Latoya on the line. So they asked Drew if she's ever kissed a girl. She said no. Drew, Drew, you know you did it. Okay, you know you did it. One thing I can say about Candy is she don't sit up and tell no lies. And if she gonna say something, she gonna back it up with a receipt and she is going to speak on it. So I know dang on well that you've done it, okay? What I feel is, is that she doesn't want her pastor parent to know that she kissed a girl and she liked it. Come on now, Drew. This is giving very much Phaedra when she was pretending she did not get pregnant before marriage and she didn't know her damn due date. And her parent happens to be a pastor, both of them. So I'm getting the same vibes from Drew. Girl, just keep it real. Drew, I don't know if you know it, but you are being tolerated amongst this group. They don't respect you and they don't really like you. And it's painfully obvious. And that was the end of the episode. I I, I, I don't know. Some kind of way. I got 30 minutes, y'all. I thought the episode was cute, yet a filler, yet sleepy time tea, honey. It was giving me emotions. And I guess it's because, like I said, I took my medicine and so I was in and out. So child, y'all get what you get and you don't pitch a fit. Y'all comment down below and tell me exactly what you thought about this episode. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And as always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.